on November the 13th, 2018, 320 attendees from 27 countries arrived at the two-day conference in Aalborg. The attendees were invited by the 4DH Research Center, Reinvest and Aalborg University. The purpose of the conference, the fourth of its kind, was to present and discuss scientific results and industrial experience with smart energy systems based on renewable energy and future fourth generation district heating technologies and systems, also known as 4GDH. The conference was also the conclusion to the seven-year research project 4DH, supported by Innovation Fund Denmark. At the conference, Professor Henrik Lund from Aalborg University took stock of the project. What effects has the project had on research within the area and on the political work both in Denmark and internationally? Furthermore, what importance has the project had for industrial growth and employment, for the project partners and for the future Danish export of energy technology? Thank you very much. Um, as Brian said, the 48 uh, research center that uh, have now been going on for, for seven years is about to uh, finalize. And uh, then, of course, after seven years of uh, hard work, uh, it's time to ask ourselves uh, what, what have we learned, what have we have achieved. If you could uh, line up numbers as how many presentations and uh, how many publications, as I did here on the slides, we have been writing and also uh, not least the 12 PhD that is an outcome of the, of the research. But uh, it's also interesting to ask what have you learned in terms of all these different research contributions if we sum them up, are there something that we can really say this is the, uh, uh, the outcome of, of, uh, of all this uh, work? The, the interesting thing is that it's bringing us both together, bringing heating, cooling and electricity and maybe even gas grids together, sector coupling, integrated energy systems, hybrid networks are a couple of uh, keywords that has been triggered by the 4DH a project and the 4DH initiatives. Um, huge European projects has been developed like strategies, all the heat roadmap initiatives. So there is quite an interesting impact also on the policy level coming from research. There has been district heating strategies triggered by the whole movement, uh, heating and cooling in all of all initiatives. Um, so there is quite an interesting impact from the 4DH um, project. Um, I think that uh, project had actually a huge impact because it uh, spread uh, the ideas of uh, new technologies and also spread maybe the most important one about the necessity of integration of various energy sectors. Uh, my group from Zagreb uh, was a partner in this uh, project um, and uh, thanks to this project we um, also um, managed to get uh, several European projects. Uh, so our uh, research in district heating uh, increased very much. I think the primary uh, outputs of these products or the deliverables uh, the outputs is the knowledge creation and the dissemination. So for the, for, the, for the research component, so that it, 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 it lead to a substantial, uh, how to say, uh, knowledge creation, create some new knowledge, innovative new knowledge for the next generation district heating. Well, the, this project has a very big impact on the global transition to renewable energy because uh, lots of examples are being set through research or in trying to understand systems in detail uh, in Denmark and also in other locations in Europe. Uh, and these, these examples can then be replicated other places that, in the world because we need to transition the entire world. And a lot of the world has very inefficient heating, heat transfer or heating uh, of cities. And so district heating is, is a very efficient way to heat cities and there's been, there've been decades and decades of experience in, in Denmark and elsewhere in Europe that uh, can be translated elsewhere and this project has really helped to gather the, the latest research on the best ways to uh, best ways to not only understand district heating but then to transfer that information to other places in the world. In the new paper I'm talking about that is in the book of abstract we have uh, sort of made a review of all scientific papers mentioning 
this uh, concept of four uh, fourth generation district heating. As, as you can see here, this is really gaining a momentum in scientific literature and is actually expanding a lot. And 2018, this year, is not even included uh, here on the diagram. You can also see from the colors that the different aspects of this is also all of them uh, covered uh, uh, in, in, the, in the literature. So we think we have had uh, an impact and also the definition papers have been cited almost now uh, 400 uh, times, uh, which is pretty good on those uh, very few uh, years. Uh, I think it's, it's not very hard to agree uh, in Scandinavia that district heating is a good idea, but, but uh, we need to, to get other people convinced about uh, the possibilities with district heating. And I think what, what, uh, what the pro project really has uh, succeeded on is uh, getting attention in, uh, in, in Europe, uh, getting uh, district energy uh, and district heating on, on top of the agenda also uh, in, in the European energy policy. So that's, that's, uh, that's really a, a, a quite a, a strong achievement. I'm coming from northern part of Japan and unfortunately there are no city scale district heating. So I would be happy to have more chance to communicate with the local municipal government and the central government as well. Why don't we apply European experiences to Asia? The biggest value is that the platform has really uh, contributed to put the modern district energy on the agenda as a technology that can contribute to solving the, the climate problems of the future when smartly combined with the remaining part of the, of the energy system. And here we see a large uh, value, uh, not least in dialogue with decision makers abroad. So you can say that uh, the platform has strongly contributed to that the old image of district energy as being something uh, black, inefficient, and communistic is quickly disappearing. So there are a lot of, we need uh, technological options. So we also need uh, some policy options. I think this product, the participation of these products is a big learning. I think, uh, it's, uh, I think it's also the, the, the knowledge and it will be very, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good reference for the China to, to, change, uh, the, the, to change the situation of the district heating. Then, of course, we also had an uh, influence uh, among our partners. Uh, this is both uh, in Rheinköping Skern, it's in Vibor, also those of you who participated in the, uh, in the uh, guided tour yesterday could see also in, in Aalborg municipalities. In Vibor, we are in a phase converting from a, a natural gas-driven system to a renewable-based system. And the work from 40H has been a very big vision for us to follow in the process. Uh, that means that we are working hard to convert to low temperature district heating, introducing uh, heat pumps based on uh, surplus heat and etc. Well, the project has had a major impact on the sector as a whole, both in terms of how we speak about uh, energy and the development of the district heating, giving a new uh, kind of uh, vocabulary, the, the way we speak about development 4DH instead of 3DH and, and specific components. And then, of course, also we have had a lot of specific projects from our company alone. We have started maybe two or three different kinds of projects regarding the customers, the distribution of energy, and also how we produce and convert the energy from renewable energy to, uh, to the, how we, we distribute it to the customers. So this concept is being used uh, within, of course, uh, the project. Uh, and that's maybe not such a big surprise, but it's also interesting to see how we now uh, get an uh, outreach. Uh, it's been interesting for me, for example, I was invited to Stockholm to Fordham once, and they simply used the concept of fourth generation to tip off uh, how they uh, had their system in, in, in the district heating system of, of Stockholm. I was also invited to the Janssen uh, manufacturing in, in the northern parts of Belgium, and they used the fourth generation word and also the concept when they redesigned the district heating for their uh, industrial facility. 
uh, in Slovakia, they also use this to, uh, to debate how the digital Eden has a future and what kind of future. And then when we prepared this uh, conference, I was contacted by our Japanese colleagues who are also present here today, and they are they just told me they are starting a 48th forum in uh, Japan, and there are many uh, other uh, things like this. And also this whole conference is people collaborating on, on this concept. Yeah. Japan, fourth generation district heating network has just started this year. And so many different stakeholders from academics and industries and some municipal government have a chance to get together every month or every other month. And that is a brand new network and everybody would be exciting to think, discuss on the possibility of introducing fourth generation district heating. And Stockholm is, uh, I think, one of the first uh, cities worldwide to actually get close to having the sort of fourth generation district heating system. Uh, and uh, a lot of the uh, things that the researcher thinks that we have been incorporated or uh, are incorporating uh, at the time being. And as such, the program has a very high relevance, I think, uh, for the whole urban energy business. Which I also think is quite interesting, because as we move further and further into these generations that Henrik Lund and others have uh, described, it's less and less about district heating and more and more about managing wind power, managing district cooling, district heating, and ba basically waste management. So it's basically four different urban systems that need to be integrated into one. We also had, uh, I think, uh, we are the Heat Road Map Europe uh, studies uh, quite an influence on the European uh, agenda. And it's been very good for us to see how when the, the Commission visioned, uh, uh, came with this district heating uh, paper, uh, district, uh, sorry, the heating strategy of, uh, of, uh, of Europe, then district heating was already mentioned on, on the first page. And this was really something new compared to what have been there before. But also interesting to see in the same heating and cooling strategy how it's emphasized not only that uh, district heating can do a lot of good to energy efficiency by recycling the heat, but also how district heating has an important role to play in integrating uh, the electricity uh, into the, uh, the system. There's quite a few sentences and focus on that as well. Well, for us, it's, uh, I think, very important that they have created this research hub uh, and uh, to kind of populate all the advances on, on fourth generation district heating and, and lead uh, policy makers and all research institutions into that direction. And for us, especially at the UN, uh, it's been key, I think, the work that they have done on the Heat World Map Europe. It's actually uh, best practices that we would also like to replicate in the countries where we're working on in the District Energy and Cities Initiative. And uh, we're actually also um, going to initiate a heat roadmap uh, similar to what was developed under uh, 48 and in Chile. So uh, for us, it's kind of a reference uh, on, on the topic. But uh, I just, uh, anyway, as this is soon closing, I would like to thank all the partners uh, in, and it's been really wonderful to chair this, uh, uh, this uh, project here. I think we had a wonderful collaboration, both internationally, but certainly also with all the industrial uh, partners uh, we have had uh, in the project. Throughout this project, Denmark has taken a lead position in the world concerning developing the next generation of district heating technology. And they will benefit Denmark for many, many years, both in having a very efficient district heating sector but also that you can export all the knowledge to other countries, both with, with methods, but also all equipment that these equipment uh, manufacturers in Denmark can sell to other countries. China, when they come here, they come, we have delegations twice a month, I guess, uh, where we have make presentations. They always ask for, what, what can you present something about the low temperature district heating and fourth generation, I even used the term also from, from China when they're coming. So it has a, had, I would say it had a, a global impact that is, that is enormous, uh, yeah. 
it's not something that will happen overnight. Uh, this uh, new direction for the district heating uh, is something that happens already in some places and in other places it will take many years before it will happen. But it is starting and it's the 40H project that has started it. And, and that is important for us as a, as a, as a company to, to follow that direction. Uh, so there is uh, a lot of research here proving and uh, the potential in low temperature district heating and also uh, what's, what needs to be done to, to realize it. Um, and <coughs> our products within, within the smart metering space uh, fits quite well into optimizing things and running things closer to the limit uh, because then we are really into where we need to measure uh, in, in terms of optimizing. So it, fit, it fits quite well. So the fact that the 40DH project is promoting or changing the political environment in Europe, that will create so much more district heating and in that way for Denmark it will create more export opportunities and it will create thereby also jobs in Denmark and, and, and activity in Denmark. I think it's very interesting that today, so I might uh, uh, have a, a good conversation so with uh, at uh, Danish company CEO, so he uh, his company do a lot of business so in China for the for just for the space heating. So in Xinjiang and uh, in the Anshan, uh, Xinjiang is a big big autonomous region. Xinjiang is province in the Anshan, so it's, uh, it's Anshan is a city so of the Liaoning provinces. So I'm very amazing. So they are also. So help the, the Chinese government, help uh, the Chinese government how to, how to say, up, upgrade the China's district heating system. It's very, very, very interesting. I would like to thank all of you, and I will certainly also like to add, I will thank all the rest of you coming to the conferences here and, and discussing uh, all this. And I hope uh, we can carry on, uh, and I'm sure we will carry on uh, uh, doing uh, more uh, development into the, this uh, concept. I think it's very important uh, for the future. Thank you very much.